Hi, hello everyone. Very good evening, one and all. Welcome to the most comprehensive preparation app for all exams, Baiju's Exam Prep. And warm welcome to the session, Gate Amers 2023 series. Today it is the last class of this series. Today we are going to discuss important topic of computer networks that is HTTP, SMTP, POP, IMAP and Telnet. Let me start the class with quick introduction of mine. I am Satya, research scholar with 15 plus years of teaching experience, mentored more than 35,000 students all over India in the GATE and PSU segments. I am qualified in GATE, UGC NET, SET and also certified by Cisco into networking and programming. Guys, GATE PYQ series for computer science, for computer science also it is getting started from Monday. From Monday, from 26th December onwards, for computer science aspirants also, this GATE PYQ series is getting started. For electrical electronics instrumentation, it already started on 18th December. Now, for CS, it is getting started from upcoming Monday. So, attend this PYQ classes and get the solutions of last five years papers live on YouTube, okay, regularly. Now you can avail up to 90% scholarship on all our preparation programs by attempting the scholarship test tomorrow at 8 p.m. So hurry up and register for this scholarship test if you have not act. And guys, yes, this is the very big news for 2023 aspirants. What is that? Maha marathons. Marathons is what at this time students are mostly waiting for, right? So guys, for you, for you guys, we have brought this Maha marathon, which is getting started from 3rd January, where Subject wise, one day, one subject, marathon, you will get unlimited or you will get more, more questions from single subject live. Okay, so in just 12 days, you can revise complete and perfect practice you will get for all the subjects for electrical, electronics, instrumentation and computer science. Okay, now let's get into the session. When we talk about these protocols, firstly, we have to talk about this application layer, which is the upper layer, higher layer of either OSI or TCP IP model. There are several protocols which work for users in the application layer because application layer main job is to provide user interface through which user can give the input or request through which the user can receive. So, application layer is providing that mediation, that interface between user and the network. So, through that only we are able to give. So, so this functionality is fulfilled by application layer using multiple protocols. These protocols we can broadly classify into two categories. One, protocols which are used by users. Example, you can take SMTP. SMTP for users to send an emails, to transfer emails. Similarly, Protocols which help and support protocols used by users means to support this HTTP, SMTP or IP or other supporting protocols. One best example you can take is DNS 
about this DNS we have already discussed in the yesterday class. By chance, if you have missed, please refer our playlist in our YouTube channel, you will get it. Okay? So, what are different application layer protocols altogether? We can say they are HTTP, SMTP, POP, IMAP, Telnet, DNS, FTP, HTTPS, TFTP, so on. We have multiple protocols at application layer. In this session, we will be discussing the first five protocols, starting with HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is, which is the set of rules why for transferring the files over the web. Over the web, whenever we want to transfer, either upload, download, browse, text, images, audio, video and any other multimedia files, this HTTP comes into picture. When the user types the web address, the computer sends GET request to the server that hosts that address. Means, yesterday we have seen when we give the URL that gets resolved to, the domain name gets resolved to IP address, where we get the service for our request, our request is sent to that server what we call that request as get request. That get request is sent using HTTP and it tells the server that the user is looking for the HTML code used to structure and give the login page its look and feel. That means whenever you are typing gmail.com, facebook.com, some xyz bank.com, you are requesting for the home page or login page or some other page. So, what page you are requesting for that page, that page is what requested on behalf of you to the server by HTTP protocol. The requests and responses that servers and clients used to share data with each other consist of ASCII code. These requests state what information the client is seeking from and responses contain the code that client browser can translate into web page. And this HTTP do all this transaction through the logical port number 8080. In response to HTTP requests, servers often issue response codes. Server need not to give the requested web page or requested HTML code in the form of ASCII. Sometimes it may generate some response codes in indicating the request is being processed or there was an error in the request or that request is being redirected. Okay? So, different error codes, first I will show you, these are different error codes. 200, it says OK, that means the request such as get post worked and being acted upon, successful. 300, moved permanently, means the request, the web page that you are looking for is moved out permanently. Suppose you look at uh, sometimes results, results are for uh, you say uh, this big billion day, Amazon big billion day, Flipkart big billion day, some festival offers. Those links will not be active all the time, all the day, no? all the days for certain time. So, after the particular time, when you click on that link that is sent as a request to that particular server, then 
the server will respond to you saying 300. Sorry, this page is moved permanently. 401 indicating unauthorized. The client making the request has not been authenticated. 403 forbidden. Client identity is known but not given the access authorization. For example, you are using a credit card. Your credit card is blocked. You will be able to log into that particular website, see the credit card information. But whenever you try to transact using that credit card, you will not be allowed because it's not authorized. But your identity is recognized. 401 says invalid username, invalid credit card, invalid number. That is what the difference. 404 not found. This is what generally we see. So, most frequent error code. It means the URL is not recognized or the resource at the location does not exist. 500 indicating internal server error. So, like this with the response codes, HTTP will react. Okay, please give some responses guys in the chat box, mark your presence, let me know who are following it and keep liking the session, keep sharing and subscribe to our BEP YouTube channel. Now about SMTP if we talk. SMTP simple mail transfer protocol and why it is responsible for sending email messages. This is used by the clients and servers to exchange mails between computers. That means between client and server to transfer email. This is the protocol. And what is the port number of it? 25. 25. And what is POP? Post office protocol, it provides access to inbox stored in the email server. When it executed, it download and delete operations it performs these two operations for the messages. That means it retrieves all messages from the mailbox, then it stores them on your local inbox and it deletes them from the remote server. That means what you can understand, what you can understand, SMTP is sending email and directly not sending to the uh, receiver. If you are the sender, you are sending an email to me, it won't directly come to me. That is stored in the mailbox, mail server. So, from you till mail server, SMTP is what sending, pushing the emails. Okay? When I open my mail account, this POP is the protocol which retrieve all the mails that I have received then and keep me in my inbox. Okay? So, HTTP, uh, SMTP we can call as push protocol because it is pushing emails. That's why you call it as <coughs> POP, POP, push POP. So, POP protocol or even you can say pull protocol. You can say POP, in the stack we know the terminology POP means remove, right? In the same way, here also we say POP or pull. 
and then what is IMAP? IMAP stands for Internet Message Access Protocol. It allows you to access <coughs> and manage your messages on the mail server. This permits you to manipulate folders, permanently delete and efficiently search through messages. It also gives you the option to get to set or remove flags or fetch email attributes selectively. By default, all messages remain on the server until the user specifically deletes them. That means what IMAP is doing? SMTP is sending email from you to the server. From server to me, POP is bringing that email and delivering in the inbox. When I click on that email, who is opening that email for me? IMAP. And, and when I set some signature for my mail, when I set some background appearance for my inbox, or when I am making some labels or creating folders. So, all these settings of the inbox are managed by this IMAP and the mail is opened for the user by IMAP. Got it? So, this is what IMAP responsibility and you can observe what IMAP is doing here. SMTP sending an email. Okay, pop delivered it in your inbox. Let us suppose you have already logged in the logged in from your laptop. Then you are logging in through your mobile from other laptop from other computer. Possible no? at a time multiple multiple uh, devices can log in to the same account. So this IMAP is what downloading a copy on every device. Got it? Now, Telnet. Telnet stands for Terminal Emulating Network or simply Terminal Network you can say. It is used for providing remote login service. That means, it provides a connection to the remote computer in such a way that local terminal appears to be at the remote side. Remote computer guys, team viewer, go to meeting, you know all these apps. You are at a remote location, but you can access my laptop. You can access the data in my laptop. Through your keyboard, your mouse, you will be able to do all the operations in my computer. Remote access. This is what done by Telnet protocol. So, how that is possible you can see. So, Telnet client. Okay. So, it is sending a request for remote access through internet by passing through all the layers. It is sent to the server. Then the server is creating a pseudo terminal driver certain space. Through that space, it is giving access to all the application programs that are located in the computer. Which computer we are accessing? Which computer we are accessing remotely? Okay? And this Telnet port number is 23. IMAP port number is 143. Okay? So, how Telnet function you can see? The commands in NVT network virtual terminal, uh, terminal forms are transmitted to the TCP IP at remote machine. The characters are delivered to the OS and then passed to the server. The server transforms these characters 
which can be understandable by a remote computer. However, the characters can't be directly passed to the OS as remote operating system does not receive the characters from the server, right? Directly it can't pass to the OS. So, it requires some piece of software that can accept the characters from the Telnet server. That is what you can say NVT, Network Virtual Terminal or pseudo terminal, pseudo terminal driver we have seen no, you can understand that is as a pseudo terminal driver. Then OS passes these characters to the appropriate application program, okay. So, before we proceed to the questions guys, now our test series is available for you. You can get unlimited access to full length mocks and subject wise tests where you will get 4000 plus practice questions that includes 40 plus full length mock tests and 30 plus subject wise tests. All the questions are gate level questions prepared by our rankers, previous All India rankers and you will be provided with virtual calculator to give you the feel of gate exam. So, you will be habituated to this virtual calculator, <coughs> right? And detailed mock analysis also will be given. So, guys, the link is in the description box avail our test series and you can now download our free ebook for your gate preparation, get the notifications about all our scholarship tests and also our free gate workshop information by registering for our YouTube channel and also by registering uh, through the link given in the description box, okay. Fine, look at this question. 2012 gate question. Which of the following transport layer protocols is used to support electronic mail? Immediately we say SMTP, but SMTP is application layer protocol. We are asked transport layer protocol, so it is the trap. So, you have to read the question very carefully. So, SMTP is based on TCP. So, SMTP is a TCP based protocol where DNS, DNS, TFTP, they are based on UDP. Okay. Yes, Satya, very good. Next. Which of the following uses UDP as transport protocol? Just now I said HTTP, Telnet, SMTP, these three are TCP based, connection oriented, reliable, suitable for large messages, but DNS, which is, which is translating domain names to IP addresses. So, the message that it resolve is a small message considerably. Hence, UDP is what the supporting protocol. So, DNS is what using UDP as the transport protocol, okay. It is a 2007 gate question dear friends. Next question, consider different activities related to email. M1, send email from client to server. M2, download email from mailbox server to client. M3, checking email in the web browser. 
which application level uh, level protocol used in each activity H http smtp pop ftp are given imap so these five protocols which is suitable or which perform which activity send an email client to mail server smtp download that email from server to client pop check that email in the web browser actually actually imap but imap is not there so you can say http so smtp pop http actually we have to say imap okay Next question, which of the following protocol pairs can be used to send and retrieve emails in that order? Which is used to send, which is used to retrieve? So, which is push, which is pull protocols? SMTP is a push protocol. POP is a pull protocol. So, you can say it is option B. It is the 2019 gate question, dear friends. Okay? That is all about these protocols. Very short session. This is my telegram group link. If you have not joined yet, please do join to connect with me. Please do like the session, share and subscribe to our BEP channel, stay connected. From Monday, we are starting PYQ series, last 5 years PYQs we will be solving live. Okay? So guys, attend these PYQ classes regularly and try to circulate this series information as much as possible. Thank you. Thanks for attending my classes. Attend regularly. Keep learning, keep growing. See you in the next session. Till then, have a great time. <coughs> Take care. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.